Hello everybody and welcome to another landscape builder video. This video is going to be a bit different from the tutorial videos we've released so far as we've been working on the next version of landscape builder and developing a whole host of new features to go with it. In this video I'll be showing you some of these new features, specifically the new image modifier layer which will replace much of the functionality from the old modifiers tab. To start with I'll give you a bit of background about the old modifiers tab and why we're replacing it. The idea of the Modifiers tab is to allow you to add topography features to your landscape and have precision and control over where they appear. For instance, you might decide that you want a lake to appear in your landscape, as in your game you want to have players cross the lake as a part of your game's story. You might want to put the lake in the middle of your landscape. With the old Modifiers system, you could do that. The main problem with the old system is that all the operations are once off. They run separately from the main topography tab and if you run the topography again, it clears what you did with the modifier. This is what the new system fixes. We've made a lot of other improvements though, and we're really looking forward to seeing what you can do with it. The core of the new modifier system is the new image modifier layer. This is integrated completely with the topography layer system. We can add it in the same way that we add a normal layer. Just click the plus button and change the layer type to an image modifier layer. As the name of the layer suggests, the layer is designed around the use of images. Each modifier layer contains a reference to one image file which can be selected from within the layer. This is similar to our previous modifier system. You can choose from one of the existing modifying images, modifier images by selecting a category, a file type and a landform. For instance, I could pick maces for the category, raw files and select the Polita folds image. Or you can choose one of your own images by clicking the custom raw or custom PNG buttons. It's worth pointing out that most of the images come from real height map data from around the world. There should be another video out soon showing you how to create your own raw files from real world height map data. So now we come to actually using the image modifier layer. We've designed the layer to be as intuitive as possible. There are two different modes, add and set. The set mode, which is the default, is the one you'll probably be using the most often. As its name implies, it will set the topography height to the output of the image layer. So I'm going to, to demonstrate this, I'll select the mountains category, then the a Death Valley image. So there are a number of different settings for the layer in set mode, but one of the important new features of the image modifier layers is that all but two of them can be controlled through the new volume picker. So if I click the enable volume picker button, I can now see a preview of what the image modifier is going to look like. I can move it, I can rotate it, and I can even scale it, all with the, new, with the usual Unity tools. Then when I go and click generate height map as per usual, all of the parts of the preview that appear above my terrain will become the new terrain heights. <laughs> and it's really that simple. The only two settings that need to be changed outside the volume picker are the invert and the use blending settings. So invert the first setting is used to cut into the terrain rather than add to it. To show you what I mean, I'll use one of the lake modifier images instead. So I'll go into the lakes category and just use the first one. So I'll turn on the volume picker again and scale the lake down to near the center of the landscape. You should turn the layer on while I do this. And now move it to where I want it. So now that I put it where I want it, I can just click generate height map since invert is turned on automatically. And now you can see that all the parts of the preview that were below the terrain are instead set to the height map as opposed to what was happened when invert was not turned on. So this is useful for lakes and valleys. As a side note, you can also have Landscape Builder add water automatically to lakes and valleys with the add water option here. It's beyond the scope of this video, but we'll be releasing a new video soon with more information on this feature. Continuing on, the other setting, use blending, is used to avoid sharp cutoffs in where the modifier appears. 
So for example, if I go to mountains and choose this Death Valley mountain image, and now I can scale it as before, um, position it, and then click uh, generate height map. So if you look at this image, you notice that most but not all of the edges are below the terrain and the bits, the edges that are above the terrain have a sharp drop off on them. So now we, to fix this problem, we could either lower the modifier so that all the edges are below the terrain, but that's not always what you want to do, or we can enable the, enable the use blending option. So if I go and turn that on and then generate the height map, you can see that there is now a smooth transition at the edges so there are no sharp drop-offs. The other mode that can be used in image modifier layers is the add mode. The add mode behaves similarly to the additive layers in Landscape Builder and should be used if you want a landform that follows the existing curvature of the terrain. A good example of this is for a lake. So if I go and select a lake from my image from the lakes category and then uh, position and scale it correctly to where I want it to be. There's a good chance I want the banks to line up correctly with my existing terrain. If the terrain slopes downwards slightly, then the lake should as well, so that my lake keeps the correct shape. The only different setting in add mode is the additive amount setting. When invert is turned on, like it is now, it is called the subtractive amount. This is the amount of the image modifier that will affect the terrain. So I'll set the subtractive amount to about half. And then if I go and click generate height map, you notice that the lake gets cut into the terrain and the curvature matches the terrain. So now if I go and increase the subtractive amount to one, you'll notice that more of the lake gets cut into the terrain. It's worth noting that since in the add mode, the image modifier is directly added to or subtracted from the terrain. Images with edges that are not set to exactly zero, for instance, a lot of real world height map data, will almost always need to have the use blending setting enabled. This is one of the advantages of the set mode over the add mode. So all of that's all well and good, but the bigger question is, how can you use the new image modifier layers? The short answer to that question is anything you like. Image modifier layers are extremely versatile and can be used for almost anything topography related. However, generally most use cases will fall into one of the following three categories, which I'll demonstrate in this landscape. The first use case is for defining overall topography. So for example, I could go and select the Santa Clarita image, enable the volume picker, and then position it and scale it so that it's going to fill my entire landscape. So I'll just rotate it a bit, get a bit of an offset. And then I can scale it up a bit as well. And then click generate height map. And then I can use this for the overall topography of my landscape. The second use case is for blending different types of topographies together. So for this, I'll add another image modifier layer, set it to image modifier, and now I can change it to mesas. So an important part of the image modifier layers is that you can add multiple layers to a landscape. And so you can combine many different modifiers together. So for this one, I'm going to select the Utah Strait Cliffs Formation as I want to have some mesas in the bottom right corner of my landscape. So I'll turn on the volume picker and I'll move it and scale it and rotate it a bit so it just covers this bottom corner. Just make it a bit smaller, I don't need it too big. I might scale it up a bit and move it and scale it down a bit bit more back, just move position it exactly where I want it, and then click generate height map. Now you can see that I've got some mesas in the bottom right corner of my landscape. So this allows you to combine different topography types together. 
So the third use case is for adding smaller scale features to your landscape, such as lakes or hills. So I'll just disable this layer and gener regenerate the height map again, so we can see back where we were, and re-enable the layer. For example, instead of, as you saw, blending together the mesa with this landscape, I could add a smaller mountain to one of maybe this flat area over here. So to do that, I'll just go into the mountains category and select the Rayleigh Peak Mountain. So now if I've enabled the volume picker again, I can see what I'm doing, scale it down a bit, make it fairly tall, and then rotate it maybe, position it on that flat area, make it the right height, and then I'll enable the blending feature and then just click generate height map. So now in the middle of my landscape where there wasn't before I've now got a mountain and it's positioned exactly where I want it. As mentioned before this can be a really powerful feature for creating gameplay as you can place landforms wherever you want them in your landscape. So that brings us to the end of this video. The image modifier layer is just one of the great new features coming in the next release of Landscape Builder. Closer to the date, we'll be releasing more videos showcasing what we've been working on, so keep an eye out for those. And to everyone who made it to the end of this video, thank you for watching.